Hi, welcome to the newest edition for the Group by video series. Hope everyone had a good week. I'm currently still thinking about the details for what I want to do for the giveaway. I still have the Iquinex L80 that I could include, but I am thinking about potentially giving away some other stuff. I originally thought about getting a Bakaneko 65 as a prize, but all the A stock have been sold out and there are only B stock boards in certain colors. I could wait for the next restock, but who knows when that will happen. The other idea I had in mind was to set one of Canon Key's in-stock sets as a prize. I've been a big advocate and fan of vendors selling and producing cheaper in-stock sets to help drive down the price for this hobby, and Canon Key's has been one of the bigger driving forces. I think that it'd make a lot of sense for me to add one of them as a prize, and if you win, you get to choose one of the kits that are in stock. Not really sure if this is a good idea, and I'm still thinking about the logistics, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Anyways, without further ado...
I've never actually heard the word Alpen Globe before, so I had to Google it. And after learning what it is, I have to say that the set reflects the theme very well. I think that is pretty interesting how the designer just had to go with gradient mods and a solid color for the alphas. My interpretation is that the mods represent the Alpen Glow optical effect in the sky, while the alphas represent the snowy mountain and how the sun dyes it a nice shade of pink and red. This combination makes a really nice looking set that I'm pretty sure I haven't seen anywhere else before. If you don't like the light pink alphas though, there is a dark alpha set that will also be offered called the Midnight Kid. It doesn't match up as well thematically per se, but I do think that it looks really nice and you should definitely consider picking it up if you want a darker tone. To match the dark alphas, MW Alpenglow will have two different novelties kits. They're pretty much the same in terms of keys that are offered except for the space bars which are either light or dark. The space bars also feature the gradient as stripes on the right side which look really nice. It's the same story with the numpad which also comes in two colors, so you can match the set in case you own a separate numpad or a full-size keyboard. Other than that, Milky Way Alpenglow also has an international kit, a 40s kit, as well as a spacebar kit. There will only be a light themed spacebar kit available for purchase, but the dark alphas do include a few spacebars of different sizes, so hopefully they can cover your use case. At this point, Milky Way has ran quite a few group buys and I think they've established themselves as a solid manufacturer who pumps out quality sets. I've used their keycaps myself, and I was truly impressed by them. They also generally have a shorter wait time compared to some of the other bigger manufacturers, so if you hate waiting, it's definitely another major selling point. I think that the Milky Way Alpenglow is a really good looking set, and I'll probably buy a set myself. The geek hack isn't up to date, which is frustrating to see, so I'd recommend that you join the Milky Way Discord if you want more information. Okay, first things first, why is this set so expensive? Is there some IP that I'm not aware of? I understand that it includes a large novelties kit, but I still don't see anything that warrants that price point. The designs aren't my style anyways, and I probably wouldn't have joined the group buy even if it was cheaper, so maybe my opinion is pretty irrelevant. If you like the style and you have the money to spend, you can just ignore my opinion and go ahead and buy it. I just really don't understand what about this set makes it cost $225 because I really don't see it. I like how the set looks, but that pricing is pretty high. I don't understand why the base kit costs $145, as there are plenty of other sets that include an umpad and more keys that are going for around $120 to $130 for the base kit. The designer could have also just made the numpad as a separate kit, since most people probably don't need it, but it's there. I do think that most people probably would have appreciated if it was a separate kit though, with a reduced price on the base kit. The original set featured low contrast hiragana sublegends, which made it look really unique and I personally love the look. However, the base kit was changed to be Latin alphas only, after the designer put out an IC form and the Latin only version won the vote. The Latin only base kit looks good, but I feel like it doesn't feel as unique compared to when it featured the sublegends. I do know that a lot of people don't like sublegends though, so good for them. But I just think that it's kind of unfortunate, since the Hiragana kit is retailing for $95. This means that if you want to achieve the original design, you need to shell out $240, which is pretty insane. The other kits offered in the group buy are priced pretty fairly overall. I do like the Novelties kit design, and I think they're pretty creative, since they didn't go for some stereotypical icons related to jeans and denim. The Spacebar kit is pretty standard, and the Extension kit is there if you need it. I think that this set looks really nice, but unfortunately due to poor pricing, I don't really feel compelled to buy it. I know that GMK sets have increased in price since the pandemic, but I really don't see anything here that warrants the pricing. If you're a big fan of the set and have the money to spend, feel free to join and buy the set. But for most people, you'll definitely be able to get a blue set for less. This is another keyboard that was supposed to be sold a lot earlier, but was delayed. The Spring is an Arasu style board and is the newest addition to Owl Labs lineup of boards. Although the mounting style is technically the same as other Owl Labs keyboards, the implementation is quite different as it will feature beryllium copper leaf springs to support the plate. It will also include the center foam that you find in Owl Labs boards, though you can always choose to leave it out of your build if that's not your style. Similar to the Mr. Suit, the Spring will feature a ton of different color options. I won't list them out here because there are 11 different colorways and 15 different variations with different coatings, but you can always visit the Notion site for more information. Part of the color customization is the stainless steel PVD weight, which looks stunning. Some people complain about the logo engraving on the front side of the weight, 
because it looks kind of weird and it doesn't really match the name of the board, but I think it's okay. It's not great because it doesn't make sense to me either, but I won't be seeing it that much, so I don't care. Despite these color options and the PVD steel weight, the spring is priced very well and starts at $375. It will be a first come first serve group buy, but according to Owl Labs, there will be a ton of units available, so hopefully it won't be too tough to grab one. I'm personally really excited for this group buy, but something that I do need to point out for any potential buyers is that Owl Labs has screwed up before when running group buys. For the Mr. Suit R1, win keyless and win key boards were swapped for a large number of units before the mistake was caught. I, myself, was one of the people who were affected by this mistake, and I received a win keyless board rather than a win key board, but it didn't really matter to me since I was fine with both. But for others, it might have been a bigger deal, and although Owl Labs did offer a small refund and remove the restriction for joining future runs for the Mr. Suit, it might not have been enough for some. Then, during the round 2 sale for the Mr. Suit, they accidentally oversold, which led to them running an emergency group buy so that people who paid received a unit. This in turn reduced the number of units available for the GMK Chiramisu collab, which meant that a raffle that was going to be hard to win became even harder. Anyways, the point is that there have been mistakes on their part, so it's something to keep in mind. They have tried their best to resolve the issues, and I thought that they were pretty acceptable, but I do know that some people would like to avoid the added stress. Despite all the problems that have occurred in the past, I am looking forward to the group buy, and I hope that I'll be able to pick one up myself. The group buy for this board was originally going to happen on February 12th, but was pushed back sometime later in February for streamers to make content. It's a full-size custom keyboard, which is quite rare in the hobby, featuring the Google Dinosaur that shows up when you don't have internet access and want a game to play. I saw on the IC that some people wanted to remove the dinosaur on the top bezel, because it does make it a lot thicker compared to the bottom and sides but the designer refused to do so. ICs are meant to gather feedback, but ultimately, it is up to the designer as to whether they want to implement the feedback, and to be honest, the amount of people who want to remove the dinosaur seem to be in the minority. The keyboard does also feature engraving on the back showing off the Google Dinosaur game, so I guess it would have still had the theme represented if the little dinosaur on the top was removed, but you wouldn't see it all that often. I'm personally with the designer on this one because I think it's part of the theme of the board, so it does feel kind of silly to remove it in my opinion. But I can also understand it from the other side trying to shift the board to a design they prefer, because custom full-size boards are really rare in the hobby, so this is one of your few opportunities to grab one if that's what you prefer. The Dyna 104 is a top mount board that comes with an aluminum plate. It's unclear if other plate materials will be offered, but based on the IC, it doesn't look like it. It also has a brass weight which is nice, but the brass weight will not stretch across the whole board. The rationale behind this was because it'd be super expensive if it covered the whole keyboard, and you probably won't use a numpad as much as the alphas, which is understandable. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make, but I feel like it might make the board feel a little lopsided when you carry it, since it'll be heavier on the left side. I'm also curious as to how this might affect the internals and the sound, so I'm eagerly waiting for the streams to hear how the dyno sounds. The Dyno 104 will not be cheap, and the estimated price is $600. That being said, I do think that the price isn't bad at all considering what you're getting, since you're getting a CNC Machine 6063 aluminum full-size keyboard case with a brass weight. This also means that this will be a heavy keyboard, and the designer said that the prototype weighs around 14 pounds of built, so if you need a super nice doorstop, or home defense weapon, or if you just like super heavy keyboards, this might be the one you want to look into.